The series featuring Hattie and Jordan on Terra 717, or Haley and Jaden on Terra 1315, or even Hannah and Justin on Terra 238, are all titled Harbinger FM instead of The Harbinger of Hell. They seem to have more insight on what the entity might be and how it corrupts and influences other worlds. Other terror worlds have quite unique and sometimes contradictory versions of the Harbinger series, which makes them difficult to track and interpret. But despite the discrepancies, each version seems to feature siblings trying to expose a nefarious cult devoted to the entity. I'm currently searching the rift for the real memories that inspired all these adventures to see how close they are to the actual inspiration. I'm even wondering if Hattie and Jordan are here, trapped in the entity, and if they are, I'm hoping their memories will somehow help me find a way out of here. So far, I have found nothing close to a real memory, but I did find another story from Terra 717 in which Hattie discusses a phenomenon she calls the overlap, which other stories call the boro, the coil, the bleed, etc. I'm currently keeping extensive notes on the Harbinger stories and their descriptions of the overlap to see if any of them can give me insight into what this phenomenon actually is. What I've discovered so far is that almost all of these stories describe places where a dark dimension intersects with the world and that these intersections seem to attract tragedy and misfortune. Some of these stories go so far as to claim broken or traumatized people can derive strange abilities from the vibrations emanating from these dark and cursed places. These people can ultimately use the bleed, my preferred name for the phenomenon to access knowledge beyond the veil, as it were. The Harbinger series from Terra 719 is also worth noting because the details included by the author seem closest to what we studied back home concerning ancients and living dimensions. Not to mention what I've been able to discover by examining the memories of souls marooned here, piece by piece, or rather story by story. I'm getting closer to salvation or insanity, whichever comes first. Chamber of Blood, Harbinger FM, Worlds Away, first. Hattie entered the small deli in Manhattan, New York, approached a small booth and plopped an envelope in front of her stepbrother Jordan. He stopped chewing his early morning his early morning scrambled eggs and asked what's this supposed to be i know who our mysterious benefactor is hattie opened the envelope and pulled out a picture of a middle-aged man with salt and pepper hair and a dark suit jordan shrugged who am i looking at surin rivera he was the sound engineer for a highly classified military project in the office of strategic operations he experienced a nervous breakdown and was institutionalized for years until he was released under the care of billionaire philanthropist Kobe Dax. Others in the same program experienced similar breakdowns. One lives close by. The question is, why is Surin helping us? Jordan raised his finger and pointed to a man standing behind Hattie. Why don't you ask him yourself? Hattie turned to face the man in the picture standing beside her. Surin took a seat beside Jordan and said, You need to leave my case alone. I assure you both, you're not ready for what you're prying into. And what's that? Hattie questioned. Jordan took a small, nervous bite of his eggs and chewed slowly. Let's not provoke the man, sis. We're not ready. Er, if we're not ready, we're not ready. I'm good with that. How do you know our uncle? Hattie asked when he didn't answer her question. Why are you helping us? What are these places you're sending us to? Sir peered at Hattie for a long moment. Then he said, Let's just say I have a fond interest in your work and your special abilities. Jordan swallowed and shrugged. Okay, sure. That's good enough for me. Not me. Hattie's face hardened as she waited for an answer. I want to know why you're helping us. Surin scanned the deli nervously, then turned back to Hattie and Jordan. 
take my advice you don't go down this rabbit hole not yet you're not ready and you're exposing yourself to dangerous people what kind of people Hattie narrowed her gaze on him police military what are we talking about here Surin shook his head gravely we're talking about people who don't answer to the police or military people who create governments and corporations to use to their end and then throw them away like garbage when they're done what do they want? Hattie asked, unsatisfied with his answer. Surin stood. Leave my case alone. Focus on the show and the leads I send your way. All will be revealed in due time. <clears throat> Hattie held up the envelope with his picture. I'm getting ahead of myself. Is that it? Leave my case alone, Surin repeated and walked away. Hattie and Jordan watched Surin exit the deli in silence. Then Jordan turned to see Hattie's determined expression, and he knew they weren't leaving anything alone. Chamber of Blood, Harbinger FM, Worlds Away. Come on, bro. Let's get ahead of let's let's get ahead of ourselves. Hattie led Jordan to the entrance of a dilapidated house in the suburbs. Colonel Jim Dunn worked with Sir and Rivera in the OSO. Before Hattie could say another word, the door creaked open, revealing a plump middle-aged woman with short blonde hair. Can I help you? Hattie smiled. Yes, I was actually hoping to speak to Colonel Lieutenant Dunn for our podcast. The woman took a step back. Is this some kind of prank? Hattie shook her head. No, ma'am. Jim disappeared seven years ago. No one has any answers for me, and all I'm left with are rumors. Jordan inched closer to the woman. Maybe our podcast could help. Maybe someone out there can help you if you share his story. Share his story? The woman hesitated for a moment. Then she nodded and said, Yeah, all right. I just want my gym back. Hattie and Jordan entered the home and followed her to the kitchen where they sat around a small round table. I can only tell you what Jim told me, the woman said, taking a deep breath and releasing it slowly to calm her nerves. He worked for the Office of Strategic Operations, which was, I guess you could say, the stuff of conspiracy theories. She paused, then continued. <clears throat> Did you know Jim said the word conspiracy theory used to never exist until the military created the term once you could actually question the government's narrative but now <clears throat> you're not questioning anything because you don't want to be called a conspiracy theorist the woman laughed then added brilliant really and that's pretty much why no one questions the government anymore even if you got a dozen whistleblowers with leaked documents all saying the same thing you don't really doubt or question anything because you don't want to be stigmatized. The woman shook her head in disbelief and continued with a little laugh. Jim used to say the origin of conspiracy theory is a conspiracy theory. Anyway, he told me, there were places in the world that weren't like other places. Places which defied the laws of physics, which defied human comprehension. Places connected to worlds away to other dimensions. The government called it the overlap. Crazy stuff, right? Jordan nodded. Hattie didn't respond. She had heard the term before, when they were investigating a mysterious cult that believed in a kind of ancient deity that would one day help humanity evolve to another plane of existence. It's a strange coincidence that this cult and the government would have the same name for the phenomenon. Like a wormhole? Jordan questioned. The woman shook her head. That's not how Jim described it. He didn't talk much about the overlap, but he said what they had seen made him think another world was, how did he put it? Consuming ours. Like these overlaps were growing bigger and bigger as we went down a kind of celestial digestive tract. And he said, he said they were pulling stuff out things from other worlds. The woman fell silent and thoughtful for a long moment. I could see changes in him. He was getting angrier and mean, and he was never mean. 
He stopped sharing things with me, and I started hearing rumors. What kind of rumors? Hattie asked, leaning forward. The woman went silent and thoughtful. Then she said, Rumors that the government was doing things to them so they could stay in the overlap for longer periods of time. I even heard that they pulled someone out from another world. Imagine that. A person from another world or dimension. Tears filled her eyes. They say he left me, but I know my Jim. Something happened to him and the authorities dismiss me as a conspiracy theorist for saying otherwise. But I'll tell you this. A sudden report and the woman's mouth filled with thick, warm blood as she tried to speak. Shattered teeth and saliva gushed out instead of words. Then her eye went wide and she slumped forward. Jordan cursed and instantly tackled Hattie to the ground as bullets began to rip through the house from every direction. Hattie stared up at her brother as bullets flew over their heads like angry wasps. I think we got ahead of ourselves. You think? Bullets discharged from a flashing muzzle in the living room as Hattie followed her brother into the basement of the house. They stumbled down the stairs into the darkness and through a beam of sunlight pouring through the rectangular window. Before they could hide, the assassin was already descending the stairs with his rifle trained on them. Hattie and Jordan held hands and closed their eyes, waiting for a quick death. A loud report sounded, and when they opened their eyes, they were both still standing. The assassin stared at them with big white eyes of disbelief. Then he collapsed to reveal Surin holding a smoking revolver. Come on, he said. We need to leave before others come. The siblings didn't hesitate. Following Surin up the stairs and out the door past several dead bodies. Had counted seven dead assassins by the time she followed her brother into an unmarked black sedan. With a great sense of urgency, Surin started the engine, hit the accelerator, and the car peeled away. After a silence, Hattie asked, Is any of it true? The rumors? Worlds intersecting? The overlap? Surin didn't take his eyes off the road as he drove them back to the hotel where their uncle was waiting for them. I can't really answer that right now, and you need to focus on your next episode. You're here to investigate the old abandoned subway station, and I think you should stick to the agenda. Is it an overlap? Jordan asked. Is that why there are so many accidents? Is that why it was abandoned? Surin hesitated, then nodded gravely. What do you and a billionaire care about the old subway? Hattie asked. Surin sighed, took a moment to find his words, and then answered. I'm looking for my colleagues. We explored these areas all over the world and a few of us never returned. And those that did, they came back to us lost, confused, insane even. I want answers. I want to know what happened to the others. I know they're still alive. They're lost somewhere between worlds. So you're using us to find them, Hattie said flatly. We're helping each other in mutually beneficial ways. Hattie shook her head. I need to know more. That's not enough for me. Cern sighed and pulled the sedan over to the shoulder of the road and killed the engine. After a long, thoughtful moment, he looked at the siblings in the rear view mirror and said, I was undergoing some, let's say, unorthodox training to enter the overlap, but it wasn't possible. It's like an impossible energy that pulls. I don't know. Hell hell. It pulls hell right out of you. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. What you feel is just pure darkness. But the OSO figured when the mind is developing, it can be, it can be fractured, broken in ways so that it rewires itself to withstand the stress of the overlap. You turn children into tools, Jordan spat in disgust. Surin looked away from the rearview mirror and lowered his gaze without answering. And so I'm your new tool, Hattie said. There was a short silence as Hattie considered her last few investigations. She remembered finding journals in the old asylum that had notes about other realms, 
Memories of other people trapped in a deathless world and journal entries revealing thoughts about how artists and writers were able to somehow tune into these other worlds with what they believed was their imagination, but what was actually their third eye. It was a strange memory that Hattie had dismissed as the ravings of a depraved lunatic with a wild imagination, but something the patient had written had struck with, had stuck with her. The truth is in the story. Hattie whispered the words to herself and thought she would give those notebooks another read in case she had missed something. She had them stored in her studio apartment in Montreal and would force Stefan to make a detour before their next investigation. You don't understand, Cern continued. This isn't just about the friends I lost. There are things in the overlap we need to understand. There could be a new type of energy, a new way of seeing the world, the universe. Jordan interrupted with a laugh. Ha! Or there's nothing new and it's just a living hell. Chamber of Blood, the spiders. I have seen them, the spiders, in my mind. They're coming. They're coming for us all. Big ones, small ones, even giant ones the size of dinosaurs. I see them in my visions, charging through the streets, bringing truth and understanding to the ignorant. But now, now they're safe. They're hiding hiding in my head and I can feel them crawling through my ear and skull, laying their eggs, nibbling at my nerves and waiting, waiting for the right time to burst out into the world to help humanity achieve transcendence. I actually don't even know what it means, but they whisper it to me every night before I sleep. I remember the cave. I remember how it all happened, how I breathed them in. They were in the thick, dark mist little things that are now growing inside me, consuming me, showing me visions of truth and whispering sweet nothings to me, a million chattering voices telling me I am the one, the chosen one, the one who will change the entire world as we know it, and yet. The believers try to medicate me. They try to poison the life growing inside me. They want to kill my children and prevent me from doing with my life what I was meant to do. I've heard them go so far as to call me insane. Insane? How? How am I insane? Would an insane person protect the life growing inside them? Would an insane person set aside his wants and needs for the life growing inside him? Of course not. They're the ones who are insane. They're the ones who need to be medicated. I'm the only sane one in this absurd institution. I've done everything for the spiders crawling under my skin, and the doctor sprawled at my feet will never harm them again. They are ready, and they are pushing out of my skull and crawling down my nose and out my mouth, and I'm becoming something more. How could they doubt? How could they not see? How could they not see what I, what I am and what I become? They will burst out of me and consume me, and I will be the apocalypse. Terra Arachna 105.7 FM Fall City Radio Classics I'm Matt Rivers with the latest report we have on the blackouts in the city Unconfirmed reports describe spider-like creatures attacking the Fall City Power Company. Online rumors suggest a biological terrorist attack unlike anything we've seen but no organization has stepped forward to claim responsibility and nothing's been confirmed officially what we do know is generators at the power company exploded into violent flames, taking down power lines, leaving the western sector of the city in dark. City police report these unknown creatures attack several automobiles near the company and are considered extremely dangerous. At least three motorists are dead and four others are in critical condition. Motorists are urged to avoid roads near the power station and the 93 South. That's the latest we have on the attacks. We'll keep you informed as the situation develops. We now return to Money Bake. With the latest advice from our financial and analysts brought to you by the now or never wealth management firm because you can never be sure what the future will bring 
105.7 FM, Fall City Radio Classics. Spokesperson for the Fall City General Hospital reports an unusual and alarming increase of poison cases due to an unknown spider the size of a fist with bright orange spiral-like markings on its back. The authorities are calling it the Hellback Spider and advise you to stay at least two meters away from the spider should you come into contact with one. Federal officials say they are trying to cope with this situation and are still trying to determine if this is in fact a terrorist attack or another phenomenon known as spontaneous evolution in which new species suddenly appear without any plausible scientific explanation. Other theories suggest a government experiment gone wrong as, is, as in the case of the weaponized ticks carrying the human-made Lyme disease variant that escaped from a classified biological warfare laboratory on Apricot Island. The situation seems to be reaching emergency proportions as more and more dis districts lose power. The city's coroner's office says dozens of corpses now reveal the poison from the hellback spider to be slow and lethal as boils and pus slowly cover the body. There also seems to be indications that some victims go on murderous rampages induced by fever, overactive adrenaline glands, and what can only be described as a complete loss of sanity. Infected individuals are to be handled with extreme caution until the boils cover the well extreme caution until the boils cover the entire body and movement becomes practically impossible. A representative of the Falls City Power Company says they are actively trying to fix the generators to restore electricity, but a strange black fog is slowly down is slowing down repair crews. Anonymous workers at the company are saying on social media that they are hearing strange sounds coming from the fog and believe it may somehow be linked to the spiders. One report claims a worker's body burst open with spiders after she inhaled the fog. Another report says that before the initial attacks, carcasses of deer were found with thousands if not millions of spiders crawling out of them. I should repeat that. There is a fog and it seems to be carrying microscopic eggs that require a biological host. We advise people to stay calm and take extreme caution as they come into contact with the fog or a hellback spider. We'll get back to you with further developments. In the meantime, back to Money Bake brought to you by the Now or Never management firm. Because today's tragedy is tomorrow's golden opportunity. 105.7 FM, Fall City Radio Classics. We are back in the Fall City newsroom. For those of you just tuning in, there's a strange disturbance in the area. Spiders of unknown origin of all shapes and sizes seem to be advancing toward residential areas, but authorities are asking everybody to remain calm and that the military is on its way to contain the anomaly. There are reports of similar phenomena in other countries and cities around the world, but they have yet to be confirmed. And now we are trying to get whatever information we possibly can to keep up with the speed, to keep up to speed. And wait, this this just in, we have news that a group of teens have barricaded themselves in an abandoned cannery by the docks and are live streaming attacks from what are clearly spiders the size of dogs. Two of the teens are the sons of the produ of our producer Sabrina Malkus. Sabrina is desperately, desperately trying to get in touch with her sons, Elias and Ilan, but can't. She seems to recognize their friends, Casey, Ariella, Olivia, and she believes Nina. It seems as though Casey may have inhaled the fog we heard about earlier and is complaining about headaches and nausea and things crawling under her skin. We're currently trying to connect to their audio feed to get a better sense of what's happening out there. Please stand by. 105.7 FM Falls Radio Radio Classics. As of 8 p.m. August 7th, martial law has been declared. The military will be in charge of security and civil affairs. The military has confirmed a biological attack of an unspecified origin. Spiders that defy classification have attacked our towns, our city, our country. Stay home. Barricade your doors and wait further instructions. These spiders are real. They are deadly. The government will keep you safe, and we're doing our best to stop the... Ladies and gentlemen, we seem to have lost our connection to the White House. But wait, the producer is telling me we have more from the teens barricaded in the old cannery. Elan and Elias confirmed Olivia was bitten by a hellback and has been locked in a room before she becomes a danger to everyone else. The live feed shows that Casey is swelling all over her body, especially her neck, where tiny things seem to be moving under her skin. Nina is missing, and what we understand what we are reading in the comments is she was pulled outside by a spider and dragged away wait 
Sabrina tells me that her sons are preparing to go out there to find her. We may be able to connect. Hold on, Elon, do you hear me? What's it like out there? Elon! 105.7 FM, Fall City Radio Classics. I followed my brother Elias onto the docks where the spiders had taken our friend. We had cans of paint and a lighter as a weapon, but I don't know what the hell these things are. But they don't seem possible. Like they were sent by Mother Nature herself to stop us from, I don't know, doing all the damage to the world we're doing. Anyway, we didn't find her. And when we returned back to the cannery, thousands of spiders had burst out of Casey's body and were eating what was left. We set them on fire and put them out. We're still here, but we can't stay for long. These things, they're from hell or, I don't know, someplace darker, if there is such a place. We seem to have lost Alan and his brother. We can only hope and pray for their safety. And now... And now we're getting reports of chaotic and panic in the city. A mother and her daughter were trampled to death at the grocery store when hundreds rushed to the entrance for bottled water and other supplies. We'd like to remind our listening audience to stay at home and let the government handle the situation to avoid further tragedy. Wait, what was that? I'm hearing. Is that hissing? Did you hear it? Shit! <laughs> 